There's a couple ways I could introduce this video. The first is the way that I've probably titled it, which is that I have relics out here from my history, my past in YouTube video making. So I'm gonna highlight a few of those things and explain to you guys what they are and what they mean to me and the significance they have uh, historically. So it's gonna be a little bit of a walk down memory lane. More practically speaking though, my garage is an insane mess right now. It has gotten way out of hand. So I'm also gonna be doing a little bit of tidying up today. Excellent. The XPG Xenia gaming laptop from Adata is built for gaming with an Intel Core i7-9750H processor, 32GB of XPG DDR4 memory, an ultra-fast XPG SX8200 Pro NVMe SSD, and either an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Max-Q or a GTX 1660 Ti GPU. Additional features include a mechanical keyboard with optical actuation and per-key RGB illumination, a lightweight magnesium alloy body, a 15.6-inch IPS display with a 144Hz refresh rate, Thunderbolt 3, Wi-Fi 6, and up to 10 hours of battery life. Click the sponsor link in the description for more. So here's the layout of my garage where I shoot most of my YouTube videos. That's the door to the main house and over here we have like typical garage stuff. We have a washer and dryer and then we've got a bunch of storage going on over there. Very normal garage type storage like our roof rack for my wife's car. The other side of my garage is where the magic happens, of course, and I kind of consider this in three sections. There's this section over here, which has my wraparound desks and shelves up top and has a fair amount of lighting integrated and backlighting behind the shelves. Right now, this is recovering from some recent projects I did, some live streams, so I need to clean all that stuff up. I do like to keep these surfaces clear if possible. Also did a bunch of benchmarking recently, so I've got test beds over here, just like a random pile down there that should be tidied. The next section, though, is this one right Right here, which is my work table, which is also a horrible, horrible mess. I've got the uh, Spectre 2.0 build that's been sitting right there, running 24-7, so I can do a little bit of testing on the fluid that I've got in there. Behind this table, I've got a big cabinet, more storage and shelves and everything. That stuff is, I don't know, probably doesn't need a whole lot of cleanup, but uh, I do need to make room for more stuff so I can store it away. And then this over here is another table where I should theoretically be having like incoming products, but right now it's got like my daughter's Tesla that hopefully she'll start driving as well as, and again, just a bunch of stuff left over from our remodel, like a roll of carpet and there's paint cans back here and everything. So I'm not sure how far down this direction I'm gonna get today. My main goal is to tidy this area and get the table cleaned off. So I'm gonna get started. Actually, before I get started, I have my first thing to share. Uh, representing my history, uh, where I've come from. Uh, it's right over here on the shelf. It's not the ukulele. So this is a breast implant, and there's a reason why I have one, and I have it here in the background. Way back in the day, from about 2006 to about 2008, I worked for Newegg.com, and I worked out in their RMA warehouse. Basically, any returns that came through, if they had any problems, they would get routed over to me, and I would check out that return. Sometimes I would fix things, sometimes I would email people and tell them that they forgot to include some important part of the return, so we couldn't process it until they sent that in. But we also got lots of random stuff shipped to us from time to time. One thing that I distinctly remember is somebody sent us a rattlesnake, which I personally wrangled and saved the lives of everyone in the warehouse. I didn't save the rattlesnake though. I did save this breast implant that was sent to the warehouse from some mysterious source. It was only one, so I have no idea where the pair is, but since I was the person in the warehouse that random stuff got routed over to, it got routed over to me. I did my best to figure out where it came from and where it should go to and just wasn't able to make any progress, so it hung out there for a couple years and eventually I took it as a parting gift. Now I just think it's kind of funny that I I have a breast implant in my background pretty much at all times. I, j I just kind of get a, a kick out of that. But perhaps more importantly, again, what it represents to me does remind me of sort of my roots, my origins, where I came from, where I got started. And as a bonus, this breast implant is practically indestructible. We actually spent quite a bit of time trying to break it by throwing it as hard as we could against brick walls and other things like that. We would have spare time on occasion back in the day when I was working that job, so uh, sometimes we had to figure out ways to amuse ourselves. But anyway, there's my first item. Breast implants means, means oh so much to me. So I'm just clearing stuff out of this back corner. And I don't know about you guys, whenever you do like a setup, like a gaming PC monitor and everything, I always think about like, when am I gonna get back behind all this and, and clean ever? The answer for this area back here is not much really. I had some cable management going on at one point with a lot of this stuff under this desk, but since I've removed stuff and put it back so often, I still have a bunch of cables. I need to get Arctic Panther over there, put back in its rightful place though, so I wanna wipe this down first. Maybe some vacuuming too. I think my sound dampening panels here are getting a little dusty.
If you're trying to do like a quick keyboard dusting and you don't want to remove all the keycaps but you want to get dust out from in between the keys on your keyboard, get something like a makeup brush, a small brush, paint brush would also work, something that can get in between the keys. And then grab a vacuum with a hose attachment, ideally with a bristle brush on the end, but since I don't necessarily want to push this down in between all the keys, the idea is to position the suction right next to where you're brushing with your brush and then as you loosen the dust it'll get sucked up into there. Also this technique is much easier if you can use both hands. Oh, Arctic Panther is dusty. It's been worse. It's been worse than this, but uh, do for cleaning as well. Alright, so since it's just been cleaned and refreshed and not entirely cable managed back here, but it's not horrible. Why don't I talk about the next item that has had a significant impact on my channel over the years, and that is Arctic Panther. This is my custom water-cooled system, the first uh, really kind of fancy over-the-top one that I ever assembled, and I originally planned this out at the beginning of 2015, built it, and then rebuilt it probably three different times from there through, uh, I guess about July 2018 was the last time I sort of reassembled it in its current form. This build was inspired, I would say, by Jay from Jay's Two Cents and his Skunk Works build. He did many videos on that system over the years and it was sort of a cornerstone of his channel so I decided I wanted to do something in the same vein. The name was user submitted, Arctic Panther, and I actually made a little song about it too in one of the videos that uh, I sing and play along with my guitar so if you guys are interested in that you should check it out. It's got dual 1080 Ti's in it as of now and an Intel 7960X which is their 16 core 32 thread CPU on the uh, high-end desktop platform so this is still using X299 but one of the things I wanted to point out about this build is it's incredible stability. It has been super stable. I've used it to game and stream many, many different times now, and uh, it's just been a really good system overall. So, so way to go Arctic Panther, and a few of the things that made this unique. Uh, the case is a Fractal Define R5, by the way, um, but I did a custom mod on the side panel, so this was tempered glass before tempered glass was cool. I cut this out myself, got a few tips and tricks from Bill Owen of MNPC Tech, and he sent me um, some cool stuff that I used along with it, like this channel molding around the edge, as well as uh, some really, really strong adhesive tape that's actually holding that on and has been working great for the past, gosh, five years? The thing I spent the most time on with this build though was the custom sleeving of the power supply, both the modular cables you can see here as well as there's a big grip of non-modular cables that's further in. That was an insanely time-consuming task but uh, it turned out so nice I've just continued to use it. That is a 80 plus platinum power supply at 1000 watt fractal unit by the way. So there's zero reason to replace it and uh, I really like how the cables all turned out too and they're, they're staying fairly trained for the most part as well. So that again is Arctic Panther. Rawr and uh, I have a full playlist going all the way back with all of the videos on the builds and rebuilds and mods and everything over the years so I will link that in the description if you guys want to check it out. So for the next phase of this project I just kind of put my head down and I started working and I stopped giving updates uh, for what I was updating about the things that I was finding along the way so fortunately this did allow me to get a lot of work done. This was over the course of several hours and the work I'm doing today is not intended to be completely thorough because this is kind of like a one maybe two day project so I'm just trying to get things mostly cleaned, a bit more tidied and organized, and of course just getting back behind all the computers and the workstations and all of the random stuff I have on the shelves and actually cleaning back there to make sure dust hasn't built up too much uh, makes me feel a lot better. So my main focus was just getting the area back here behind my main two workstations cleared out. I had way too much stuff piled up in there. And then I got the shelves pretty much cleared off a little section at a time, wiped down, dusted off a lot of the stuff that was on there, and just consolidated some things, moved some stuff out that I didn't feel should be there anymore and I'm feeling a lot better about this entire space. Like I don't know how well you guys can tell but if I step all the way back here things are just looking a bit more tidy and clean and, and put together. Now this is all of my camera gear, camera and production gear which I've set aside because what I really need to do is update this closet here to hold that stuff a little bit better but that's probably going to be a separate project so for now just 
gathering it all together. And I did get this table started to be cleared off, but uh, then of course I moved more stuff onto it, like all of these boxes of new Z490 motherboards. You also might notice that I took the Spectre 2.0 build and I relocated it over here so it could be sort of a set piece for a little bit. I, I should actually be getting back to testing this really soon as well, see how those two-way 2080 Ti's hold up. For now though, it's just there looking pretty and it would be lit up better, but for some reason the MSI Dragon Center decided to just completely stop Stop working and I tried to reinstall it to get the lighting set up again and it just sort of refused to behave so for now it's just here and we've got the standard rainbow vomit going the pump also seems to be running at a very very low speed but anyway here though is the actual next thing on my list that I wanted to talk about with relation to my channel and everything and of course the 1 million subscriber play button uh, was a big milestone for me. I was really, really happy to hit that. One million is a little bit of an arbitrary number for sure, but it's it's a big milestone. So I was really happy to hit that. And from starting out my channel early on, this was definitely one of those goals. Like, wow, if I could really get that far, it would really give me a sense of accomplishment and validation and all that good stuff. But right next to that, we also have my uh, much more old school 100,000 subscriber play button. But this is the old version though, and so for me this sort of indicates the, the two phases of my channel. This was when I had just started out, had just come off of working at Newegg, finally went independent, and honestly there were a lot of growing pains in those first few years. I was working for myself, working by myself for the first time really ever. So I think it took a while for me to sort of train myself to be more responsible, stay on task, stay focused on getting the videos produced every week. Earlier on, I think I was just taking it easy a little bit more and enjoying that sort of freedom of work from home. But I think then there was a transition and it's not something that I really talked about very much like in videos or anything like that. It was just something that I sort of steadily had to learn and grow towards. And for me, that's kind of represented by the shift over to the 1 million subscriber play button. Because when it comes to my channel growing and sort of becoming what I've wanted it to be and what I've envisioned, uh, I really feel like that transition has occurred in the past. I couldn't point to a specific date, but uh, I think these two play buttons represent sort of the early phases of my channel versus the more recent phases. And I really, of course, just have you guys to thank. Uh, any of you who have come and watched my videos and subscribed to them, you are the ones who have given me the motivation and the encouragement to continue to doing what I am doing. Uh, so I'm gonna keep doing it and thank you. Here is the next item I wanted to talk about. And I guess apparently I have forgotten to dust this one off. Ooh, slightly damp wood, it smells very nice. So it looks kind of funny now because I just wiped it off with a damp cloth, so parts of it are kind of wet. But this is uh, the Ryzen box. This is a maple box that AMD custom made uh, for the launch of first gen Ryzen with the 1800X and, and all that stuff. And if you're wondering what's inside, it's a bunch of empty retail boxes that have been collapsed down from lots of other CPUs from the past, which I decided maybe I should keep those. Look, there's even Intel boxes in there. Isn't that funny? More to the point though, and hopefully this won't be used as uh, evidence that I'm clearly just a, a paid AMD shill. Ever since I first started learning to build computers and getting into the DIY PC space, I've always had my own motivations for doing it. Originally it was to save money, because if you're doing this back in say the late 90s or 2000s, and at that time you could actually save a decent amount of money by building your own system rather than buying a pre-built. Now today you don't necessarily save as much by building on your own, but my other motivations for encouraging DIY PC build building are still there, which is choosing your own parts and making sure they're high quality. Uh, the flexibility to pick parts that meet your needs, whether it be gaming or otherwise. Just the pure raw enthusiasm of getting like a really high-end new PC part, whether it's a CPU or graphics card or otherwise, installing it, setting it up, and then seeing that A to B performance difference. Those are the reasons why I enjoy PC building and those are the reasons why I encourage others to do it. And then of course, there's always that idea of an upgrade path. Uh, scrape together whatever money you have right now, whether it be four, five hundred, six hundred dollars, build yourself a working system and then wait for a birthday or Christmas or or whenever else you might have a little bit of more money coming in and then drop in a new graphics card or upgrade your CPU. And Intel hasn't always done the best job of allowing you that upgrade path. At least on the mainstream side, they tend to only go one or two generations between shifts of sockets or shifts of requirements for upgrading your motherboard. But of course, if you've been watching the DIY PC building space in the past three or four years, you're probably familiar with AMD's Ryzen series. 
and the popularity it has gained, and the fact that they do have some form of upgrade path going all the way back from first gen to second gen. Now that we're getting to third and fourth gen, I think things are getting a little bit more muddy, like that whole B450 and X470 stuff that went on recently, but I do still think they're doing a better job of supporting enthusiasts and supporting the ability to upgrade your system over time than Intel has done. AMD in the past three years has also sent quite a few different packages for different CPU launches, and honestly I've broken most of them down and gotten rid of them because I don't really have a lot of the space, but this one I'm keeping because it's a high quality walnut box. It's the first gen Ryzen. And then kind of going back to that idea of like the first phase of my channel and the second phase of my channel, I would say this second phase has definitely been highlighted by all of the Ryzen launches over the past three years and the way it's sort of reinfused the PC building space with a lot of enthusiasm, more options, higher core and thread counts, and really just some impressive performance that's uh, changed the landscape from, well, you better buy Intel because they're the best in town to like, hey, AMD is providing a lot of bang for the buck right now. So, so of course, Competition is good, and I like this walnut box. And now for the last item on my list, if you will permit me, it's going to be my garage, or more specifically, the set that I've been building over quite a few years out here in my garage. And I know that's totally like the, oh, here in my garage meme or whatever, that's fine, I don't care. I like working from my garage and I like sort of the strange mix of things I have going on. I have built pretty much all this stuff from the shelving to painting the walls to this wraparound desk thing to building this entire work table that I often do builds on. Hey, look, it's cleaned off and I managed to vacuum it for the first time in God knows how long. I built this cabinets and all this uh, storage space over here and I've expanded it and added to it and of course it doesn't always stay super tidy as you can see. This area over here I did not quite make it to with my cleanup efforts in this video but I think I have hit a good stopping point for the cleanup efforts at least and I think this does allow me to give you a nice view of everything out here and talk about the reasons why I think it's a good representation of my channel. For one, like it's a, it's a really strange mix of like semi-professional equipment. Like I have these C-stands over here that I have some of my lights on. These are really, really nice C-stands. I finally invested in them. I even sandbagged them properly sometimes, but uh, these have just done wonders for my lighting as well as adding these LEDs. Meanwhile, at the same time, I have this overhead framework, and yes, this was also built in a uh, Paul's Garage Work Log series video, so I'll link some of those in the description if you want to check them out. But like this, this is still my teleprompter, which is just a piece of glass and a cardboard box that I built with like some wire framing in there, which I set on top of this very dusty monitor I do wipe it off from time to time and I position that in front of me here when I do teleprompter stuff if I have a script I need to read off of. Also like my roof mounts for these lights up here that was really cobbled together but has been quite functional and actually provides a huge amount of additional light down here on this work surface and it's a lot more sort of spread out diffused and uniform. So I guess kind of like my philosophy with PC building, which is just to, to get something functional that you can use and then over time steadily add to it, upgrade it, keep it clean. Regular maintenance is important too. And I guess just try to make things better as you move through life and, and have a dedication to doing that. So I don't get too philosophical or anything like that, but times are pretty rough right now. So uh, I really appreciate all of you guys who have been coming in and telling me thank you for producing videos to provide you some sort of entertainment or escape. Trust me, I need that too right now. But I have a lot of plans still for uh, out here and upgrading my set and making things better and more functional. And I'm gonna keep documenting that as I go along and I'm gonna keep pushing to make videos, videos that I hopefully you guys will enjoy, but also videos that I like making. Because I think that's been a key factor for my channel is not just doing videos that are product focused and what the vendors wanna send me, but finding the balance between doing stuff like that, because I know people do like the reviews and the tech content, but also videos like this, where I get stuff done behind the scenes, videos where I show you guys where I'm working and pretty straightforward, like here's my house, here's my set, here's my life. And I guess if I'm gonna close with something today, it would just be to say thank you to all you guys who have continued to watch my videos, uh, because I could not do any of this without your support, without your views, and of course without your feedback by commenting in the comments section, and of course hitting the like button and subscriptions and all those good things, they're always super appreciated, so I just wanna say that to end this video. Thank you guys so much, thank you for watching, thank you for continuing to support my channel, we'll see you guys in the next video.